Hello, I'm Cristiana Figueres, and this is my very good friend, Johan Rockström. We're here not only to again welcome you to the Global Climate Action Summit, but we're here to tell you a story. It is a story of the journey that we're already on of exponential transformation, already evolving right there in front of us. However, before we start the story, why don't you tell us why is exponential transformation actually necessary, Johan? It starts with the big picture. After 50 years of rising human pressures on Earth, we have reached a saturation point. We reached a point in 2018 where Mother Earth is sending social and economic invoices in the form of extreme events across the entire world, right as we speak, seeing in the front of us causing tremendous impacts across the entire planet. The scientific message is very clear. Things are changing faster than we had predicted. The unprecedented, the largest ever observed forest fires in California, all the way to forest fires, droughts, and water scarcity and tropical heat, even in the Arctic, most likely connected to the slowdown of the Arctic vortex caused by the amplified melting of Arctic ice, influencing the jet stream, which is causing and locking high pressure temperatures in northern Europe, all the way to the droughts and temperature rise in Australia, leading to floods in Pakistan, the unprecedented floods in Kerala, with a need to reinvest in the entire state, all the way to unprecedented events from floods, droughts across the entire planet. We see the impacts in terms of warming oceans that are absorbing so much of our impacts, with now coral bleaching, acidification across all oceans on the planet, with 30% of the Great Barrier Reef, the world's largest coral reef system, having crossed an irreversible tipping point. This is the big picture that we're seeing in front of us today. But the even bigger picture is our 100-year journey. A 100-year journey where what was normal 100 years back and what was then the extreme events is now becoming our new normal, where we're seeing across all continents the rising temperatures leading to very significant impacts across the entire social and economic fabric that we all depend on. In fact, can you believe it? We've now reached one degree Celsius warming on planet Earth, the highest temperature on Earth since the last ice age. We are at the point, at the edge, where we need to start transformations. But there's an even bigger picture, which is the rising scientific evidence that the Earth system has only stayed below 2 degrees so far, thanks to the resilience of the Earth system. We have 50% of our greenhouse gas emissions taken up in oceans and land. Earth remains still our best friend. But we're learning that there are tipping points all the way from the risk of losing methane from thawing permafrost to the degradation of the jet stream, the thermal high line, whole energy exchange in the oceans. And we have so much evidence today that these tipping points are what regulates our ability to have what we so much depend on, a self-cooling planet, and avoiding crossing a tipping point when Earth would potentially move irreversibly towards a self-amplifying warming temperature. Just a few months back, we summarized the science from all the tipping points we have from the risk of the Amazon rainforest flipping over irreversibly to become a savanna, showing that already at 2 degrees Celsius, we may be crossing a planetary threshold where we could enter an irreversible journey towards a hothouse Earth. So, Johan, are we condemned to a hothouse Earth? Well, the good news is that Earth remains resilient. It's still dominated by self-cooling feedbacks, despite our unsustainable behavior across all sectors in society. So we still have the opportunity of transforming towards a decarbonized future well below 2 degrees Celsius, aiming at 1.5. The Paris Agreement has unprecedented scientific support. The pathway we need to follow when translating Paris is very clear. We need to bend the curve of emissions no later than 2020, in two years' time, and then following a pace of decarbonization, roughly a 67% reduction in emissions every year, which translates to a Gordon Moore-type innovation pathway that we've called the Global Carbon Law. If we can cut emissions by half every decade, we can take us to Paris. 
and that this is the transformation pathway that can take us to the decarbonized world economy by 2050. We need to transform the food system from being the single largest source of emissions to becoming a single largest sink of emissions, an agricultural revolution. We need, whether we like it or not, we need to recognize the need to have carbon capture and storage and biological capture and storage, but we also need to maintain the carbon sinks and natural ecosystems. And all of this, dear friends, if we can decarbonize according to the carbon law, transform food systems, keep resilient ecosystems, we have a 66% chance of staying under 2 degrees Celsius. This is a global transformation. It is an exponential journey. So let's just understand what exponential actually means, because frankly, we're not used to thinking exponentially, right? So if I take more or less 37 steps in a linear fashion, that will be the length of this fantastic stage, more or less. 37 steps linearly. Now, if we think about these steps in exponential fashion, and we think actually we're going to be exponential by two, so then we would take one step, then two, then four, then eight, then 16, then 32. We get the picture, right? You can do the math as well as I. Well, you have fundamentally different results. So if we start here today and we take 20 exponential steps, we will be in LA. If we take 23 exponential steps, we will be in New York. If we take 26, we will be back in LA because we have gone all around the planet. If we take 30 exponential steps, we will be on the moon. And if we take 37, we will be on Mars. That is the difference <laughs> between linear and exponential. That is the difference between linear progress and exponential progress when we think about climate change. So from Mars, let's come back to Earth and see, are we actually on an exponential path? Well, Johan and I would like today to put forward that we actually are on an exponential path, at least in some sectors. Let's begin with what we have seen in renewable energy. There, we have definitely seen 10 years ago, let's be frank, renewable energy was a boutique operation. But now, with the growth of both solar and wind, we have gone to a doubling of renewable energy every 5.5 years. That means if we continue that trend, exponential trend, we will actually be pretty safely, even discounting for all the challenges that we're going to have, we're going to be pretty safely at 50% renewable energy by 2030. Something that would have been unthinkable just 10 years ago and definitely the evidence for exponential progress. Now let's look to the latest exciting the latest exciting um, news that we all read in newspapers every day, which is what is happening in electric vehicles. Quite exciting. Frankly, 10 years ago, electric vehicles were science fiction. Now, we have every major car company already putting forward their electric models for all of their old internal combustion engine models, and we have a growing number of countries that are setting dates for banning the sale of new vehicles if they are internal combustion, i.e. regulating that all new vehicles will have to be electric. Currently, the uptick in electric vehicles is actually following market path. But once these, these policies come into effect, we will have electric vehicles in the market following an exponential path just through the combination of market forces and policies. Then we have, let's look at the green finance sector, a very exciting sector, just on green bonds. Now, let's remember that we know that in order to transform the global economy, we need to invest at least a trillion dollars every year into green infrastructure. And just on green bonds, one of the financial instruments, where have we gone? We have gone from where we were, practically unheard of instrument, certainly 10 years ago, to now already an exponential curve, which if followed up until 
um, up until 2021, we will be at $1 trillion just with green bonds. Another exponential curve that we're beginning to see is the divestment movement. Started in 2013, and by now, we're already at $6 trillion with exponential curves to look forward to. And then carbon pricing, yet another financial instrument to accelerate low-carbon uh, low economic growth. The going word on the street is that carbon pricing is not occurring. Not true. You can see how much is actually already occurring in um, certainly in terms of countries, but also in terms of coverage of greenhouse gases, with more news to come very soon. So across the green finance sector, in, with different instruments, with different takes, we are starting to see the exponential curve moving forward. That, of course, means that companies are now able to take science-based targets, and we have there, again, an uptick in companies taking science-based targets, which means zero net by 2050. And stay tuned for a very exciting announcement that will come today that will take us beyond where we are right now at this moment of 476 companies. All of this together means that countries are actually able to peak emissions. And by 2020, we know that we will have 53 countries who will have been able to peak their greenhouse gas emissions while increasing their GDP, i.e., we are beginning to disassociate the two curves of economic growth and GHG growth, which is exactly what is called for in the Paris Agreement. So, Johan. Where are we heading? I have to be frank with you. Hold on. I have to be frank with you because all, everything that I have said is all well and good, but it only covers a few sectors, right? So what happens with the other sectors? Well, you know, it's almost like it puts us in a point of schizophrenia because there's never been reason to be so nervous as today based on the scientific necessity, but there's never been so much reason to be hopeful given the exponential rise of journeys in the right direction that we're seeing. So when Hurricane Florence is now about to hit North Carolina, and we know that this is very likely actually associated, and it's an unnatural path due to the weakening of the jet stream, we also see all these positives. What we are releasing here today is for the first time the Exponential Climate Action Roadmap, building on the empirical evidence that you just presented, Christiana, and looking at the next 12 years. What is the roadmap and opportunity we have to cut emissions by half by 2030, over the next 12 years, following the global carbon law that can take us to Paris. And this maps out with the best evidence we have, the 30 solutions which are scalable, which are potentially beneficial, both socially and economically, across all sectors in society. This covers the whole transport, energy, buildings. It is a careful walkthrough of all the mapping that have been done from private sector, from policy, from countries around the world, to see what is realistically achievable, wedge by wedge, scale by scale. And what we find is that, yes, we can reach 50% electricity coming from solar and wind by 2030 on the current trajectories. And most excitingly, perhaps, is that when we come at food consumption and land use, we even hear, which is the dark horse, as we all know, that the final battleground, whether we'll reach Paris, is not only about decarbonizing the energy system, it's also about a transformation to sustainable and healthy food systems. And then even here, the solutions are in place. We have the technologies, and we can succeed. Minimizing food waste, investing in sustainable intensification, recycling resources, getting new energy balances in our ecosystem management and landscapes. This just shows that we are on path to success. So to support this transformation, this exponential transformation, as you know, all nations came together in 2015 in Paris and agreed to a common path toward the decarbonization of the global economy. We, in the meantime, have taken that path, and we are building the moments between now and 2020 to ensure that we're keeping track of the exponential progress that we're seeing, and in fact, increasing that exponential progress. But 2020 is only two minutes from now. And 
over the next few months in preparation for 2020 when countries must come together again to assess what they have been able to do, what the private sector has done, what investment has done, what technologies have moved forward. They will have to come together to the table to step up their national ambition once again, because there is in the Paris Agreement a five-year cycle, which we call the ratchet mechanism, in which every five years countries need to upgrade and update their aspirations based on the reality that they see and the projections that they believe are going to be possible. 2020 is the year, the first year in which these countries must come to the table and increase the ambition, but it is also the year in which science has told us it is the very last moment that we have to actually be able to bend the curve of emissions, which currently is still increasing, bend the curve of greenhouse gas emissions, and begin the radical descent that we must follow in order to stay safely under two degrees. So, we have heard today from Johan that this exponential transformation is necessary. We have seen that, at least in some sectors, it is already exponential. And we have just heard from Johan that it is achievable. The moment has come to move from knowing that it is achievable to actually achieving it. And that is what we're gathered here to do over these two days. You have been invited to a summit. It is a summit but it is not only a summit. This is actually an invitation for all of you to join the journey of exponential transformation, for you to assess where are you on that exponential curve, how can you contribute to the next uptick, and how can you reach out to everyone else, to peers, to colleagues, to supply chain, to encourage them to change their mindset from linear to exponential, because the world, the future of the world, is one that we must co-create based on radical collaboration among all of us. Because the consequences of either doing so or not doing so are not just for us, they are for everyone. Thank you. Thank you.